Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, so you might have noticed that there's some Ryzen 5 5600X uh, benchmark leaks out there. And it just so happens that I actually know the guy behind them. So I've asked him to do some, a little bit of testing for me with his 5600X, and uh, yeah, I have some, some more information to, to present to you that I don't think's been presented anywhere else on the internet just yet. Um, but before we do that, let's take a look at some of the benchmark scores that he's posted. And he's he's only had the chip for like a very short amount of time. Uh, the way he got it, it was he was he was on eBay searching to buy, searching for a Ryzen 4650G, um, so the Renoir APUs, and he stumbled across a Ryzen 5 5600X listing that wasn't a scam. And so now he has a Ryzen 5 5600X, um, and he's been posting benchmarks with it since uh, on Hardware Bot. And I, he also has a YouTube channel. I'll, I'll leave a link to, to his channel down in the description. Um, so he'll probably be posting some videos with uh, of benchmarking the CPU there. He might also maybe do a live stream with it. I don't know what his plans are, but yeah, I'll leave a, a link to his channel in the description. He also does RC car stuff. So, you know, if that interests you, you, you might want to check his channel out as well. Anyway, so yeah, he's just been testing it out on air so far. Um, and it, like he's had it doing 4.7 gigahertz in Cinebench R15, which R15 is just like the the thing is hardware bot. Um, do they even track R20 yet? I'm not sure. the The thing is is like the, there's a whole ranking system on hardware bot, and Cinebench R20 isn't really in it just yet, whereas R15 is. So anyway, uh, yeah. So he's just been doing like. R15, R11.5, X265, Geekbench, which, uh, how's it doing on that? He has a much better, I think he has a higher Geekbench score coming soon. Oh no, that's for Geekbench 4. Has he posted a Geekbench 4 yet? Oh, he has. Um, yeah, he has a much higher one much much higher score that he hasn't posted yet um anyway so he's going to be improving these scores these are like really really early results but anyway like the cinebench r15 score is kind of insane because it's top 100 for six core cpus already and for comparison like let's look at some of the other cpus that score similar to his 4.7 gigahertz 5600x so a 6 gigahertz 8700k a 6.1 gigahertz 8700k, another 6 gigahertz 8700k, a 6.3 gigahertz 8700k, a 6 gigahertz 7800x, right? So, uh, yeah, and there's also like your 5.2 gigahertz and uh, 5.2 gigahertz uh, 3600s and 3600x as well. Um, so, yeah, like uh, AMD has really good per clock efficiency in Cinebench. So... Yeah, anyway, so that, that's kind of insane that an air-cooled CPU is just basically, like, well, you know, progress. This is what happens when you have, you know, double-digit IPC gains from from a new architecture. Is just, like, uh, you no longer need LN2 to get, like, you beat the old CPUs on LN2, um, but with air cooling, because you have 20% more performance per clock. Like, that's the thing, is, like, I, either you can clock the chip 20% higher, or you can just do twice 20% more work at the same clock speed, right? So, yeah, IPC very strong. Very, very strong. And also, I'm not necess I'm not certain that this is even maxed out. So, again, like, he's not had the, like, the, these initial scores that he's posted are very, very early. Um, so... Anyway, um, yeah, and again, link. There will be a link to his channel in the description. You should subscribe to him because he'll he'll be post. Like I don't know how. Again, I don't know his plans, but he, these scores aren't maxed. He's definitely you know he he's a he's argue he's a more active hardware bot overclocker than I am. So he'll probably be posting much better scores soon. Uh, the thing I asked him to test because the thing I've been most wondering about is like, do we like so. I'm not, I can't remember if this has been officially confirmed. Uh, actually, we should be looking at this. So I don't know if this has been officially confirmed, but right or I can't remember. Uh, Ryzen 5000 uses the Ryzen 3000 series I/O die, right? Um, so the I/O die is the thing that has the PCIe connections. It has the memory controller, the Infinity Fabric connection to the cores. It has I 
think there's even USB ports and like SATA ports hanging off of it as well. Um, and so basically, um, the thing that, you know, I've, I've been wondering and probably a lot of other people have been wondering is like, are we going to see any improvement in terms of memory clocks and infinity fabric clocks with the 5000 series? Now, personally, I didn't expect any improvement on the memory clock side of things because it's like, it's the same memory controller. I really can't see them changing anything in that department. The infinity fabric side of things, I was kind of leaning towards the side of probably not much improvement, but there's a chance that maybe they did something to the substrate or the CCDs are now lower load and so they can clock the infinity fabric uh, higher, but no, no, you can't. Um, Jumper's 5600X still hits a wall in terms of FCLK at 1900 megahertz, um, which is in line with like every single Ryzen 3000 series CPU I've worked with, um, which is a grand total of four chips. I don't bin CPUs, so I've not had, like, I've not tested some massive pile of CPUs, but it, like my 3600 does 1900 FCLK, my 3700X, the garbage 3700X from launch week does 1900 FCLK. Because the thing is, the IO die is made for, on 12 nanometer global foundries, like AMD hasn't been really doing anything with that. Man like, th th I, there's no reason to adjust it. Like, it works, it's an IO die, it's a memory controller, we don't really, like... You know, it's not a priority uh, component for performance, so it's just like, why would you change anything about it? Just make it as cheaply as possible and make more, like, and, and just crank them out. Um, anyway, so my 3950X also does 1900 FCLK, and, uh, yeah, Jumper's 5600X also does 1900 FCLK. Um, this right here is we were trying to get it to do 1933, um, and it just ends up with a 07 postcode, 1966, same thing. Also, the voltages here, like, this is the voltage settings I use to basically brute force 1900 FCLK. Like, there's been a couple situations in which the CPU wouldn't just immediately boot, like, well, my 3700X basically immediately does 1900. Um, my 3950X, I think, also does 1900, like, auto settings, basically. Um, the 3600, I think, needed a little bit of convincing, and, uh, Steve's, uh, so Steve from Gamers Nexus, I think, with his 3600X, um, XT or something, there was a CPU that he was complaining to me about not doing 1900 FCLK, and I just sent him these voltages, and it was like, there, 19 F 1900 FCLK works now. Um, so basically this is like brute force. If you, if your chip doesn't do 1900 FCLK and it, you should apply these voltages. If it still doesn't do 1900 FCLK, you got really unlucky. Um, at least that's, that's what I like. That, that's my criteria for like, can you do 1900? Cause if it doesn't do 1900 on this, also you need 1.2 volts SOC voltage so that the IO die voltage can actually hit 1.15 volts. Um, because, uh, the way that voltage is generated, but Anyway, yeah, this 5600X uh, doesn't do 1933, it doesn't do 1966, and it doesn't do 2000 megahertz FCLK either. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame um, that, you know, the Infinity Fabric, but at the same time, it's kind of like, well, they didn't change the IO die. The chances of the Infinity Fabric clocking significantly higher were very, very low. Um, if not, you know, like, again, like, there was still a chance that maybe they tweak the substrate to, to, to run higher frequencies or tweak the CCD's end of the connection to run higher frequencies, but apparently no. 1900 still seems to be the, the limit, so basically for your daily memory overclocking, you're still looking at 3800CL14 as being the lazy maximum performance. And I call it lazy maximum performance because technically if you massage some B-die kits for long enough, you might be able to get them to run 3800CL13 at not completely stupid voltages. Um, but uh, yeah, under most circumstances, you'll probably just want to stop at 3800CL14. There's also not much of a performance difference between 3814 and 3813. So, you know, I, I don't know why you would bother with that. So, yeah, basically, in terms of memory overclocking, we can, like, look, it's the memory controller off of 3000 series. It behaves like the 3000 series memory controller. Um, honestly, we, like, the IO die really does behave like, like, it, it's a, it's a on-package north bridge. It's the best way you can think about it. It's kind of cool from a production perspective that, you know, AMD is able to now just, like, take... Like, they, they don't need to build a new memory controller. It's just like, yeah, we, we take our working memory controller and then we bolt new cores onto it. The thing that makes me, what that makes me wonder is that maybe for, um, like, AMD might have the option, 
And actually, they definitely have the option. I'm not sure if they're actually gonna gonna, gonna do it, but AMD technically has the option to take the Ryzen 3000 memory I.O. die again and bolt on like Zen 4 cores. And then also they can at the same time have a DDR5 memory controller with Zen 4 cores attached, right? Like, I don't think they'll actually do, like, I don't think it's very likely that they would actually, well, maybe if you had like a low core count skew, you could have that on like DDR4. But yeah, like it opens up a whole bunch of options for like what you can do with your CPU when, you know, the cores are separate from the memory controller and the PCIe stuff. So that's kind of cool. But the, the bad news is, uh, yeah, the, the Ryzen 3000 series memory controller performs like the Ryzen 3000 memory, con 3000 series memory controller, even when it's attached to the 5000 series. So uh, yeah, that's <laughs> unsurprising, but, you know, somewhat disappointing at the same time. I think a lot of people were hoping for better memory overclocking capabilities out of 5000 series, but it looks like if you want the best memory controller AMD has to offer, you just have to get yourself a Renoir APU but yeah, those like those don't really make sense unless you're specifically looking for a CPU for memory overclocking. Like the, from a performance perspective, a Ryzen 5000 series is stronger. Anyway, so yeah, Infinity Fabric uh, unfortunately still seems to wall at 1900. Admittedly, this is with a sample size of one chip, but you know what are the chances that Jumper's chip is like bottom 10% or something? It's far. I I think it's it's far more likely that this is a lot like 3000 series where you just hit a wall at 1900 pretty much always. Because, um, again, like, it's supposed to be the same I.O. die, and if they didn't change anything else, then, yeah, that, that, that kind of behavior would make perfect sense. Anyway, um, the other thing he did was he ran some IDA, and in IDA we can see a lovely latency improvement, uh, which I initially thought, like, oh, AMD must have, like, done something to the, to the memory system to make it more efficient. Um, uh, yeah, no, they didn't. <laughs> I, I, like, the thing is, I haven't really paid much attention to the 3300X, even though I think it's a cool CPU, it's just, like, you can't actually buy one, so, um, you know, like, it basically doesn't exist. The 3300X is a paper launch, um, but anyway, the 3300X is also capable of, like, mid-50 nanosecond latency, so what's actually going on here is not some massive optimization of the memory system, it's just, like, well, Normally, if you take like a Ryzen 3600 or a 3600X, the way the cores are configured is you have one CCX with three cores, and then you have another CCX with three cores. And there's a big difference between, and, and with a 5600X, you have one CCX with six cores. No second CCX. And that's the same thing you have with a 3300X. Like the 3300X is a 4 plus 0 configuration in core count where you have one fully functional CCX and one completely dis disabled CCX. So this is a single CCD, single CCX CPU, and so it has really low latency. The 5600X is a single CCD, single CCX CPU, so it has lower latency. And then, yeah, that, that's basically that. So the latency has improved, but it's not because AMD, like, so, so the like 5900X and 5950X should actually have latency figures similar to the 3000, like 3600, 3700, 3800X, 3800X, uh, 3900X, all of the three, like the multi CCX uh, 3000 series, also 3100 for that matter. That's a 2 plus 2 uh, CCX configuration. Anyway, um, the other thing we can notice is that the write bandwidth is still limited by the CCX or CCD count. There, not CCX count, CCD count. So yeah, write is still limited by this being a single CCD CPU, which you can also see that right there. Uh, you get 3,400, 3, uh, actually you should, it's saying 3,400, no, 30,400 megabytes there, <laughs> otherwise it's confusing, otherwise it sounds like you're saying 34,000 34, when you say 3,400, oh wait, no, whatever, 30,000 and 400 there. Um, whereas this is, yeah, like this is doing the same right bandwidth, which again is just a limitation of being a single CCD CPU. So, yeah, the the Ryzen 3000 series memory controller um, on the 5000 series still behaves like 3000 series. There, that, that's it for the video. Man, this video is way longer than it needed to be. Um, yeah, um, anyway, you should subscribe to Jumper. Um, again, link in the description to his channel. And uh, that's it. So, like, share, subscribe to my channel. 
and uh, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the descri description below. You can support me directly through that. Then there's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. There's a link to that down in the description below as well. And that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.